Hey everyone, welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 81. My name is Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. And I'm Kathy Azar from Catherine Azar Photography. And today we have a very special guest with us, Bridget Hanley from Little Conestoga Framing. She's going to talk to us about why it's important to do special customized framing versus getting a frame at a big box store. And a little bit about actually framing, how to choose stuff. As you see, we have a pile of stuff here that we're going to play with and talk about. So... Uh, first question I kind of had, Bridget, was why go to a custom picture framer rather than just picking up a frame from XYZ store? Well, first of all, you're going to come to a custom picture framer because they're good. They know, they know what materials you need to put on your photographs. They know um, how to apply it. And they're going to give you suggestions on the right colors, proportions, uh, different kinds of mats. We have different, all different kinds of things here that we're going to show you. We also have a gallery wrap um, that will show you. Custom framers uh, know their business. The big box stores don't. Um, they have, you know, part-time workers and they're there to earn a paycheck. Or they're it could even be the, the person that works in the other department, <laughs> that works in the fabric department that you know, had to, the, you know, somebody called in sick and you, yeah. so you don't know who you're going to get that day. Flower, you get the flower arranger. Yeah. Yeah, you got the flower <laughs> arranger that day. And the, even those of us who think we know what we're doing kind of got showed up a little bit today. <laughs> 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 so it's even if you're a photographer and you think you know colors and whatnot, a mm -hmm. custom framer has more skills than we do even. Are there any kind of qualifications for framers? Actually, there is. The Professional Picture Framers Association has a certification program, which oh, no. you can take a test and become certified. Um, there's also different certification programs through different framing schools. Um, my feeling is, although the Professional Picture Framers Association is very, very good and their tests are difficult and very thorough, um, I don't really think anything beats the school of hard knocks that you're out there and you you are learning about all the artwork the kinds of photography i don't know if you guys remember old cebachromes and ibachromes oh talk about a nightmare i used to cry when those used to come into the studio because i'd be like you can't breathe touch do anything you have to wear a mask and gloves and it's like you know because they were so high what were they like? High production, high, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. just, and the way we told them is we would pick them up and you would go like this and you could hear it like, you could hear it like thunder, you know, like that, like they do a thunder, you know, wow. for the movies or something. Oh, they were a nightmare. Now you have to know your inks and you have to know your color. You have to, you have to know what, how this is processed for the right way to frame it too. What about, um, I guess you're kind of saying that there's different levels of kind of artwork and di yeah. different, just like any photographer is going to have different skill levels, different yeah. framers are going to have different things that they're comfortable with. So if you have a couple in your area, it can't hurt to try each of them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, find a good picture framer for your artwork. Once you make friends with one, uh, don't let them go. <laughs> don't, don't let them go. Uh, I do have a program here for my artists and photographers where I offer a discount, a professional courtesy. I want you to frame your stuff. Um, I want you to put it out on the market. I want my mark on there too, because if I frame it well for you, it's going to sell. So make friends with a good framer and find one. Um, the big box stores aren't gonna have it because you have a different person every single time. So the, the, uh, the, more of the, the more of the professional stores and studios are gonna be able to help you, mm -hmm. if that helps. <laughs> Uh, one of the big things, well, did you have a question you're thinking? No, about? I was just going to talk about what I did wrong and how Bridget Go for showed it. me the, that one, the wrong yes. That sounds good. Yeah. So we had shown you this photograph a couple of weeks ago. This was of my dog, Maggie, and I did just pick up a, an expensive frame or I had it at my house, I don't even remember. And I thought it looked kind of cool because it was black and black and it showed the whole blackness of the dog in the background. And Bridget so I made a face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so Bridget, you tell me what's wrong with this. There, there are a number of things that are wrong with it I have learned and Bridget will tell us. Well, the intention is good. You, you had the right idea, okay? Staying monochromatic with some of your photographs, it's a good idea. 
What's killing her on this is one is an overpowering frame. The frame is just big and clunky and heavy. The second thing is, is this lovely, filmy, cheapo Plexiglass. plexi, okay? Mm -hmm. What you have here is a dark, dark image, and you put this high glare plexi on it, and all you have is a mirror. Whenever I do dark photographs or dark pictures, I always put the non-reflective glass on it or museum glass. We can get into glass later, but you would find that having the non-reflective on here would be good. The second thing was is what is so appealing about this photograph is not the fact that it's a black dog with a black background on a black frame, it's his eyes. So why not put a frame on there that's gonna enhance his eyes? We played a little bit here. So we had one like this. I don't know, Kathy, you put the other one up there and, and you guys can decide. Good thing I already like saw these because I don't yeah. need to see them again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we also said, Bridget said that if, I like a lot of detail on things and if this was too boring, you can get another little trim and set it either inside the frame. Yeah, so you would do this fillet, would set right inside the frame and enhance the picture with just a little bit that now, you know, just a little bit around it, not a big loud thing. Now you see his eyes. That's the whole point of this photograph is you yeah. see his eyes. And now what about you, the mat? If I were to put a mat on it, one of the things you have to realize with photographs like this, there's a lot of, uh, a, not a lot of negative space. And what negative space is would be the spacing around your object. This is a very, very large close-up. You need a big mat. Now I would suggest a black mat. Okay, and maybe even black on black, where you wouldn't see that little white line, you might have a black, black core mat. Open up your photograph with a mat, and then put your frame on it, and you'll be amazed at how your eye is going to jump frame into the picture and just be totally swallowed up by these soulful eyes. I mean, I think what we're going to need to do is... Uh... Do it. Uh, go ahead, get it done. Yeah. We're going to show yeah. it here, we'll get it done, and then we'll show it again next week. Yeah. The next week's show, and, uh, and I my think husband that's be the wants this for his office, so it's not a bad okay. thing to do. Yeah. Um, and can you take something like this and do the frame on the outside, do the mat, and then do a, another little frame on the inside? Yeah, you do that the, the fillets can be added to the inside of mats, and they can also be added um, to the inside of frames. So um, we do have a photograph here that I could show at a later time too. At the end of the show, we'll show you one of those ideas too. Fillets are a great idea to um, enhance the photograph and also join the frame together. They can, they can work together. Just add another dimension. You don't always have to have double mats. So something else that came to my mind, I've been, I've, we've been talking on previous shows about getting your prints off of your computer and onto your wall. So I've been doing a whole lot of displays in my house, mm -hmm. which I'll have to take some pictures of when I'm finished. So I've been hanging a lot of pictures. Um, what do you recommend and what do you use? I mean, this was what came with the, the photo. Oh, photo nice, what, <laughs> nice. What do you recommend? Because I have some this that are- This screams, I will fall within 24 <laughs> to 48 hours, I will fall off the wall. And I have had some fall. Some of them have had, had the sawtooth, some of them oh, yeah. have the-, the Generally metal. for this size, I will wire a picture. Okay. What, measure one third of the way down from top to bottom, measure a third of the way down, drill your uh, your little triangles, okay, and do wire. And someone, I think on some of the bigger frames that I've had, they have two of these on either side, which is yeah. a nightmare to hang on the wall. Yes. Yes. But they say that they don't like to have the metal, and why is that? No, you don't want wire on everything. Yeah. Um, I just ended up doing uh, six photographs in a picture frame um, window. Mm -hmm. Each photograph floats in the glass. We have glass all the way around. So the photographs are smaller than the glass and they float. So whatever you put it up against will absorb the background. As, mm -hmm. you know. Now, this is a window pane that weighs probably, oh, I'd say a good 25 pounds. I just did the same thing. I think mine's yeah. even 40 pounds Yeah, so. you're not going to do mm -hmm. wire because what wire does is wire stretches. Wire stresses and if you are hanging a picture by one little apex right here, all of that stress will go right there so and here. it will break eventually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your really big pieces, when you think about the physics of it, um, the bigger pieces, the wire will pull the sides up and pull the top and bottom away. So the top will go here, the bottom will go here. So basically your pictures eventually will bottom out. Anything really big, um, I just experience, I use UV museum quality plexi 
so that keeps the weight off of it, and I do not use wire. Right. There's there's all different kinds of concoctions. They're so hard to hang. Yeah. 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 To well, they, they do make a product that is really, really nice where you hang, it, it's a little, like a little sawtooth that goes into the corners of the frames, and it self-levels. So you put you you measure and you put your we, two we nails use that and then on the you front just of the, in the studio on those four pieces in the front counter. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll take a picture and show it. But yeah, we put them there and yeah, they're called really wall nice. buddies, and you can use those up to a certain size, and they self level. So if your office just goes chick chick chick, and you just there you go. I do it always for corporate jobs, offices, banks, places where. You can't be going by and you know tucking your pictures every time you look at them. I so. just measured, you know, cut measure twice, cut once. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Measure eighteen times, yeah. drill once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah that's thing, hard. The other thing that we've done in the past is just printed the photo and framed it without glass. Mm -hmm. And typically, you can you put you can order with a coating or you put your own coating on your inkjet prints, and that'll cut down on the weight also. Yeah, you know, allow you to because. Glass is very heavy, especially the, the museum glass. They're very heavy. and um, Or like you said, the, the plexis. Yeah, so there's, I, there's I just have a rule of thumb. Go. I, I go UV museum plexi after a certain size. Why why fight with, just why fight with physics? Why fight with it? You know? mm -hmm. Just for a story, I had a gentleman who had a flag that flew at Iwo Jima on an aircraft carrier. It was his grandfather's in World War II. So the general says, take the flag down, we're going to war. So he tucks the flag in his duffel bag. Now the story of the flag, think about it, made it through the war, made it through all this stuff, and finally this gentleman gets the flag. It's his grandfather's. So he made it through all these generations. He had the big box store frame it, and they did everything right up to a certain point. They sewed it to the fabric mat. They sewed, you know, everything was done to the right. Then they put glass on it, and they put a nice little one-inch oak frame. He hung this up 15 feet in his family room because he had one of these high vaulted family rooms. It's a full size flag. It's like six feet by four feet. It's, mm -hmm. you know, Heavy it's on that glass. Oh, when it came crashing down, he said it came crashing down in the middle of the night. Yeah. And it took a chunk of concrete this thick. He had a, he had a, a oh. custom painted concrete, uh, like a little, you know, step up to the French doors. It took a chunk that big off of it. It would have killed somebody. It would have killed somebody. Did now I'm dance? happy. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm like, yay! I get exactly. to frame the job. <laughs> you know, he's not happy. I said, but you know, then you have to start thinking. You know, you have to start thinking. The the end of the story was is when I did get done with the flag, I had to deliver it in my horse trailer because it was huge. <laughs> and the mother was so happy that her daughter wasn't there because her daughter would have thought she got a pony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving through this little suburban neighborhood in my horse trailer because it's the only thing that would fit on the, it was, you know, six That's feet funny. by, you know. And yeah, so she's like, yeah. she goes, I'm so glad she's gone today. She's had a sleepover and she would have thought she got a pony. <laughs> Well, beyond I mean, they, a flag is great, to, different things that you can frame. Would you frame a canvas? Uh, you can do canvases, correct? So here's, here's what you call a gallery wrap. These are really popular for photographs. They are. Really My popular. high school senior, as one of her rewards for referring people to me, she wants a canvas. Those yeah, are... yeah, they're really popular. Um, you don't have to frame them. You just hang them on the right. wall. What's nice is the edges are all wrapped around and... So from the side but you need and the a, front. You need some negative space or some empty space on the outside of that image to be able to fit. You would put, that. yeah, you would put it, um, you know, on a big wide wall or something. You, this isn't something you would want close. Again, right. your images are very tight and very in there. Mm -hmm. So you would have this in a big room. You know, so when you look all the way across the room, you see you see the dog. And let me okay. interrupt you real quick too. Sometimes you can have it wrapped all the way around, or you can choose to have your your image fit flush to the side and then and do they a color, color the sides yeah like that's the that's the big thing too so gallery wraps you don't frame uh, two ways to frame a canvas is to just simply take your frame and you would put it over top okay or they also have something called a floater where where it's very tiny um, I don't know if I could get one for you here but it's very tiny it just sits right in here very tiny and you can pull your floaters out so there could be a gap and that looks kind of cool too. It yeah. depends on pain in the neck for me to do. Oh, <laughs> it's hard because you got to get that gap just, you know, perfect. That's right. But it looks really cool. So you can use a floater for canvas or you can use a frame over top of it, but gallery wraps don't need a frame. This is this is the this is the hot thing right now. And it's popular to do wraps. a um, 
collage of gallery wraps too, yeah. or to do or one like ones. this, right? Yeah. Or to do Bunch one that smaller. size on either side, and then do a big rectangular yep. square yep. one in the they're, center. Yep, they're, they're really, they really, really big. Neat. Yep, they're really big. They're cool for photographs. I really like them. And you, as a picture framer, can you create them as well? Do oh, a I stretch canvas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I would see. I have to, as a photographer, bring you the canvas? Yeah. And you bring me the it. canvas, or if you have. Um, you know, your JPEG image or something, I send it to Greg. So I yeah. send it to him. Anyway, next question. <laughs> Why that molding? What do you see in that molding oh, in that this, makes it work? this picture? Yes. Well, when I'm doing pictures, we, we did little doggy here. And when I'm doing pictures, actually, maybe I'll do it over here. It's easier to hold. When I'm doing pictures like this, um, I just put it up there. The picture will tell you what it wants to be. I, I, I put my customers at ease. I just say, look, don't, don't stress out over it. They'll tell you. We try on, I don't know, before we started taping today, we tried on, I don't know, five or six different moldings for this portrait. And we'll show you in a second. Yeah, it, it'll tell, it tells you what it wants to be. Don't stress out over it. And I love a customer who says, I don't like it. I'm not offended. I didn't give birth to this, so I'm not <laughs> offended about it. I need to know your feedback. And if you say, ooh, I like that, or ugh, I don't like that, hey, that's all the more that I get to work with to make a successful right. framing. Um, this is a very soft photograph. This is a very, very, um, I mean, it's very clear, but obviously just soft. Mm -hmm. Okay, Don't all your colors are soft. Yeah, your colors are soft. Your everything, you know, there's not a whole lot of definition up in here because it's all fur. I just pulled this out. We put it up there and the customer went, ooh, I like that. Now, is this the one we're going to pick? Maybe, maybe not, but this is a starting point. You don't have to have a mat around it when you have a frame, and you'll see it with this uh, portrait too. You have a frame with certain different dimensions. You really don't have to have a mat. But your picture framer has to know to put a spacer in there. you got to keep your photos off the glass. Um, you all have had it. Where mm -hmm. you, There is no way you can get those things off of there. You can throw them in a bathtub, and you cannot get that off. I mean, you're scraping it with a razor blade. Once the everything. moisture gets in, you mean, you know, over time, and, this, and, and the your, photo yeah. adheres to the and glass. It, the old prints, you could do that. The old real photographs, RC prints, you could... Typically, you could get them off glass. Sort of. Somebody yeah. gave me a whole box of vintage 8x10s. But if you're like, talking oh. about inkjet stuff, forget no, it. No, no. You can't do that. You can't, it right you can't wash an inkjet print like you can a, a one of the older RC prints. Right. And then so. the question goes to dry mounting. Typically, um, traditionally, conservatively, no, you should not dry mount photos. What does that mean? Dry mount photos means to apply the photo to a substrate which would be a foam board with adhesive. And it's stuck on there for good, okay? <laughs> from their point of view. Yeah, from our point from of their view. Po yeah. From a framer's point of view. Gotcha. You're t yeah. Traditionally, you're not supposed yeah. to, but you know what? I do. I do, mm -hmm. because like something like this, if I'm gonna put it with no mat and, and against the glass, that, that, little, that little spacer is not gonna hold up with, it's still gonna mm -hmm. sag in there. So I'm gonna dry mount it, you know? I don't have a problem with dry mounting. Somebody seeing this right now is probably going, "Oh my god, dude, that's against all the rules." But the thing with <laughs> photographs, photo. the thing with photographs is, of course, the phone rings yeah, on this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the thing with photographs is, is that they're, it's, it's, they can be easily reproduced anymore. It's not really a big deal, you know. You, we can, we can make new copies, unlike the old. Old school, you know, it was a lot more difficult to get new ones printed, right. well, you know, 50 too, years right. ago when that came up. The right. adhesives you know. that you're using are probably archival safe. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's not going to be as much of an issue mm -hmm. either. No, because mm -hmm. you're using your you're using your, your substrate, your foam board is acid-free. You're using um, the acid-free, I use glue. I mean, I still do the whole roll-up method, but they, they make boards now that are just heat sensitive or pressure sensitive so that you can apply it right on there. And you're right. Mm -hmm. If I ruin this photograph, you know, God forbid, but you know, the elves show up once in a while, I can call Kathy and say, Kathy, hmm, sorry. Oh, no problem. I'll whip out another one tonight. You and know, you know and, what I yeah. do? I'm actually kind of mean sometimes. Yeah. If they bring it to you to get framed, yeah. or they go through me to get it framed, yeah. I'll gladly reprint it for free. Mm -hmm. But if they take it and go somewhere else and that framer screws it up, I'll typically make that framer pay for the new print. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad I'm on <laughs> Which is good to have a relationship with the exactly. Stuff happens. It you know, does happen. Because most people, again, they're taking stuff just to or, you know, one of those other big stores and it just, you know, they they if they screw it up, 
it's not my fault. They should have gone with me and paid a little bit of extra money, and it would have been fine. Nothing so. beats opening up a frame that somebody else had done and seeing duct tape. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? So right across the back <laughs> of the photograph is the big old thing of duct tape. I'm like going, nice, nice. <laughs> the other thing I don't like, and I really, I really got it. Oh, gosh. And I understand with copyright and all that stuff, when the photographers put their sticker in the middle. Oh, right. I can't dry mount it now. I can't mount it in any you're way. you have a bump? Yeah, because mm -hmm. you have a bump. You know, and I can't, and, I, and scraping it off is just too much work. You know, really. Or you're going to screw it up. Yeah, you know, so it, that's, that's the only thing. Don't is, put yeah. a sticker on the back Don't put the sticker, you know, if you're going to have your sticker, put it down here or, or put the sticker on the outside of the package. We all get the, the copyright thing, but I would think you're also putting your, your stamp or your image or your signature on the photograph. Mm -hmm. Okay? And again, that's what we were talking about before. No, don't sign the mat. If, you, if you've matted your photograph and you're putting it in the show or whatever, don't sign the mat. You, Explain why so that people know why not to. Well, let's say, let's say I buy one of your photographs and you frame them all in white mats and you're all proud of yourself and you put your name on it and this is your work. But I live in a log cabin and I like a rustic frame and I want to change the colors of the mat and now my hands are tied because you have your signature on it. Well, not. I'll still change the photograph. It's just that your name isn't going to be on, on it anymore. anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. And people say, oh, who took this photograph? I can't remember I threw the mat away. Yeah. So yeah. what are your thoughts on putting, normally I do not put a watermark on my photo if I'm delivering it to a client. I might put it, have Bridget put my card or something on the back of the frame. What are mm -hmm. your thoughts on having? Uh, I sometimes, it depends. Yeah. I go either way, you know. Sometimes I'm hot on it, sometimes I'm cold on it, so it really depends. Yeah. Um, I think if, you've, if, you have, if you have a mark that's tasteful, and it's in the corner and you've done it in gold or black or silver or something that is not um, offensive to the photo. Hot pink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, then do it. Then yeah, do it, yeah. you know. So th that's, that's, yeah, put your, put your signature on it. So the backstory on, on this image is it's my, one of my high school seniors that's going to be a, a representative for me. And it was taken on a horse farm, which Bridget loves, because we're shooting right now on her horse farm. And I edited it with a new software that I've been playing with, Portrait Plus. Loved it. Very quick and easy. Did a beautiful job of lots of different things. We're going to do a more thorough review of that coming up very shortly. And I want to frame it. So if I came in to you as a new photographer working with you, what would you recommend that we do with this image, given it's a senior, young and fresh, something fun? Okay, so first thing I ask you is, um, is this for you? Is this for her? Um, where are you going to hang it? And then we go into what are your takes, okay? So if it's for her, I might uh, take into consideration, you know, 19, 18, 19 year old girl in graduation, 17, whatever, and they're not going to really be interested in um, having fillets on the inside or anything. They're going to just want to see a cool frame. Mm -hmm. However, if it's for her mother or for, right. you know, and where's it going to hang? Grandma. Yeah, grandma, where's it going to hang? Then what we do is we talk about mats. Do you want to have a mat around it or not? Now, in this case, um, compositionally speaking, you don't really have to have a mat. You have a lot of negative space around it. You have a lot of uh, nice, nice, it's a centered image. You don't have to have a mat. This is a, what would you say, 13 by 17, 13 by 18? 13 by 19. 19. 13 by yeah. 19. So yeah. to add a mat now, you're going to be talking. Big. Yeah, like 19 by 27 or something like that. And this is yeah. another reason to come to a custom framer because this is an atypical size. Yeah. So there are no mm -hmm. standard sizes in a custom framing studio. Mm -hmm. Standard right. sizes is the Henry Ford answer to picture framing. You know, you can crank out a bazillion eight by ten. They just decided mm -hmm. all these sizes and decided that that's how which the isn't the digital size it. anymore. It came too. from right. well, eight by ten came from the original, the older film film sheets, which were four by five on the long camera on mm -hmm. the large camera. So that's where yeah, four and by then five, your eight next by ten, is eleven by fourteen. Then your next choice is 16 by 20. There, mm. To me, there's no standard size. And somebody comes up, I just want a standard size frame. Everything's cut from the beginning. 
So we don't do that. And I don't even like eight by tens anymore. I think they look truncated. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. truncated. But they're Sometimes they work. Yeah, in, absolutely. In, in some Sometimes images, they definitely work. In general, but for but, something like this, I did try to cut yeah. it like an eight by ten, and mm -hmm. it just didn't look right to no. me. No. And maybe it's because I know the original image shows more of it, her. It, it would make her look not as thin. It'll make her look bigger and, and don't wider. say that to any woman. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's an eight by ten crop. Cropping the image does make yeah. a difference. It and did. does it took change it, right it a lot. Yes, and it it you know it's not going to make them as thin and you know it's going to look weird. Right. So. I agreed. So, so where would we go from here? Frames after we decide if you want a mat or not. Okay. We in this case we decided no mat. We weren't going to do a mat. Then we started playing a little bit. This was one of Kathy's favorite frames, okay? So here's a frame here for Kathy, all right? You can put that little thing in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here's Kathy's frame. Um, Not my favorite. It's too small. There's just not enough depth. There's not enough weight. And it's also a little distracting. The right idea. We kind of like that gold That's idea. That's why we pu I pulled it because I liked the color, and I thought it would, it would go with the hair. And then when we put it up, we went, mm. Yeah. So the customer is telling me now she likes gold. All right. That works. But then we thought, okay, if this is going to be a formal portrait that's going to go in um, Dad's office or something, we might do something like this. Now, you'll notice a lot of these frames we have have dimensions to them. Whenever I don't use a mat, I like to try to use a frame that has a dimension. Dimensions meaning here we got a little, you know, a little edge to the inside. We got a little beading. We've got a nice cut. We have a little softness on the outside. The light hits it and gives it different uh, levels. And, but, and I also like a big chunky frame. I like something okay. that's bigger. So and she told me chunky. So we brought out this chunky. Now the lines of this frame are kind of interesting with the photograph. Okay, we're cutting Greg out of here. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I should be the one holding this. Whose show is this anyway? So we like the lines of this. Uh, it, it's a little stylish. It, it, you know, it, has, it has something going for it. Matches her hair. Matches her hair, could be a possibility. Got to watch out with the matching thing, though, because sometimes people pick out too many details to match, and there's a rule for that. Here's another one. Hmm. I don't really like this one so much, but we're in the gold, you know, the golds, and we like that. The final one that we kind of we kind of liked um, solves Kathy's problem of chunky, solves my um, observations of dimensions of frame, big enough, has enough weight, and uh, this one we kind of liked. Um, whether or not we buy it, you know, I'd have to, yeah, we compare. I have a board, too, in the studio where we can magnetize it. We step back. One of the things picture framers are doing, this is what I don't like about the big box stores. They put it on a computer screen. Isn't that cute? And you're supposed to visualize what your framing will look like. You've got your nose 12 inches away from that. What I do in my studio is I have a magnet board here on this wall, and we stand back there. Because now your eye can process everything. And that's the way and you're going to see it in your house. That's how you're going to see it in your house. And we'll put it up there. Sometimes we'll put it on the floor, you know, and, and, and just so you are away from it. And I'll put three or four frames, one in each corner, and we'll be like, I don't like that one or that one. So we take it away. Now which one do you like? Oh, I really like the one on the left. Now do me a favor and go look at something else and come back and look at it because your eyes will get fuzzy, you know? Yeah, they'll get fuzzy. Go away for a while or let's work on something else. And different people are, are good at that, at visualizing. Sometimes with, within Lightroom, mm -hmm. I'll do two different edits and I'll bring my husband in and say, which one do you like better, this one or this one? Don't say, do it again. This one, this one's like being at the eye doctor. And he'll go, Kat, I can't see a difference. So I'll call my 14-year-old daughter in. Come here, Peyton. She'll go, that one. Yeah. <laughs> so and he can't even away. see it. Walk away. And there yeah. have been some projects where I've just said, it's not going to happen today. You just, it's not, it's like trying on bathing suits. Not going to happen today. Go Especially if they're emotional about the picture. Yeah. They probably have a harder time picking. Yeah. Or, or if they're not emotional. Like they're like, okay, mm. I really like the picture, but I just, I don't know where I'm going to put do it. Do people sometimes just say, I trust you, you just do it? Oh, God, yeah. That's oh, yeah. fun for yeah. you. Those are the, well, I do that a lot. Yeah. Those are the scary <laughs> Usually because of time. Yeah. Usually because of time. Those you know. are the scary ones. Those are the ones that, that I just go, uh-oh. You know, I have a customer who comes in here. I bet you he's here 10 seconds. He just Is that him? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, he no she talks my ear off the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine. Now he runs out. I call him you know, a week later and he picks it up. He doesn't, he, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad, you know. So um, one last thing I wanted to ask is, when to use a double mat? Um, I like to use double mats on everything. 
Okay, I, I do. I like double mats on everything. I do too. Uh, double mats, I think, give, uh, well, for instance, this piece here. Now, this is just kind of put together um, a little bit haphazardly, but you get the idea. Here are some of the possibilities, too. Yeah. So, possibility number one is what we do is, this is a photograph that's going to be stuffed into an 11 by 14 frame. I don't like the mats. I don't like the single mat idea. I think it absolutely diminishes, cheapens your photograph. I think it's just generic. You just, mm -hmm. It's not you terrible, so but it's generic. This, and mm -hmm. you, you, you sat there until the sun was just right and you took this photograph. Now you're going to... Mm. And you're then, you're also talking an 8x12 photo that you're trying to fit in an 11x14 11 11 frame. 14 frame. The and mat is not even all the way around. I don't want a frame that's expensive. I just want a simple black frame. Well, here you go. And I'm thinking, mm, it just doesn't have anything. Mm -hmm. It's There's fine. There. It's fine. Mm -hmm. We don't want the, fine. You get the people who say, well, there's blue in it. Let me put blue in it. All right, here we go. So I get out the blue mat, and then they look at it, and they go, oh, that's not what I was picturing. Looks cheesy. Yeah. There's a rule for, okay, here's, here's, here's a rule. I'll give you a secret. Here's a rule for when you have a color in a picture and you want to enhance that color. The color wheel says complement. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have a purple in there, put on a green. If you have, you know, and you can play with it. If you have a red in your picture and you pull out red in your mat, you're going to be really disappointed. And it's also not going to match most of the time. Wow. No. It's almost never going to match, in fact, those hardest colors. colors to work with are blue. That's kind of mm -hmm. why I picked out blue, because blue's the hardest. Mm -hmm. Here's a double mat here. Gave you a little more depth. That inner mat, the one that's closest to the photograph, gives it a nice border. Nice little border, okay? And then when we go to put the frame on it, what I like is just to kind of have the whole thing working, okay? Is this your choice? No, it's sort of my choice. You know, this is my photograph, so it's my choice, all right? That's what I like. It go. I like to look at it. I like to frame things that I like to look at. The problem with standard sizes now, too, what we're doing. We did the 11 by 14. Yeah. All right. Now, the only choice you have is, come here, buddy, 16 by 20. Well, yay. Look at that. It totally like a, overwhelms the picture. Like a lot of yeah. Who's got room for this for a little photograph? Yeah. This is too much, okay? So so the thing is, is when you're doing your custom photographs and you've spent all this time on them, um, you know, you want to have, you want to have it done right. This is just a two and a half inch mat. This is the drama of a black mat, which is kind of what we're going to do with little dog. <coughs> so here's the drama of a black mat. Um, do you want to have drama? Do you want to have more subdued? You decide. And this is what I talk about with my customers. When you come in for, for this portrait here, we're going to go through a lot of things. Because remember, you're the one taking it home, you're the one putting it on the wall, and you're the one looking at it. I'm just simply the go-between. So if you take it home and look at it and go, I don't like it. Well, that's some of my fault because I didn't do my research. Okay. And I like that you mm -hmm. will show all the different options. I'm very visual. I have to see it. Mm -hmm. I just can't hold up the black frame and, and black mat and say, I don't, I don't know. I have to actually put it on the picture and go, ooh, ooh. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I have gone as far as for some of my people who are just absolutely stressing out about frames is take all these corners home, put them up on the wall, you know, tape your picture on there, put these corners on there, and decide which I'll do with that. I, I, it doesn't bother me. Take them home and do that, you know. That's great. And, yeah. Sometimes it backfires because you as the customer, not to not to insult you, but you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you just feel good taking these home and looking at them going, I like that frame. Now, these are the ones we approved. But I did have one that's like, oh, he's getting all excited and he's taking everything off the wall. It's great. He goes home and he has all these pictures and this is going to go here, 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 and here. And then all of a sudden he comes back, he orders the gaudiest gold frame ever. And I'm like, really? Okay. You, you took it home. You put it up there. This one you want. And then decides he didn't like it. And could he return it? I can't. Because you can't resell if it. I had done it and it was wrong, I would have made amends. But I said, I, this is a custom piece, it's, you know, and it's a custom right. size. So you have to be, you know. So sometimes the take it home program will backfire. <laughs> but you could. You could. If you were really stressing out about it, I don't have a problem with it. Take it home. Look at it. Same thing with matte colors. You're stressing out because your wall's a certain color, blah, blah, blah. You know. 
I'm also a big fan of double white mats or triple white. I do. I, I have a, an artist who does a lot of watercolors, and we do a lot of triple ivory mats. Is that to just give it dimension, depth? It's really cool. Um, I have a photograph here that we did. This is this is a woman who's one of my customers. I love that. That is beautiful. This mm -hmm. is a double white mat. Are there okay? dogs in it? <laughs> <laughs> this is this was taken on her vacation in Kauai, and um, she's actually. Uh, uh, a very very good photographer. I don't she think is. she realizes how good she it's is. It's beautiful. Um, but the, I suggested to her double white mats. There's so much color in the photograph. There's so much, and then she chose a very good frame. Um, and we just the, the light just hits it nice. It's very tasteful to do your double white mats or mm -hmm. triples. So there's there's no glass on that, correct? Not no. yet. No, we just I just put this together to show so it wouldn't reflect. But anything. I kind yeah I like it. Yeah, she will be getting the non reflective. UV conservation glass. So conservation non-reflective has a UV property of like 99% or something like that. And that's what I use mo on most photographs is that that's my go-to glass. Um, I give you a choice too. I give you a choice. So like, I think we got one more question we can fit in. Okay. What colors should we be picking out of an image? What, what when, you know, if when are I, you choosing one color or another for for an image, you know, that you're trying to highlight? Sometimes I get stumped. Um, if, if A lot of times I get stumped because it's just hit or miss. I, just, just, get, I just get paid for it. <laughs> do, you just, for hit or miss, right? do you just grab different mats and throw no, up and see? No, I will ask you. So, for instance, if you pick up this portrait of this girl, um, or better yet, let's pick up this portrait here, Okay. <laughs> And I see this and I go, and this is a wonderful portrait. And I'll be like, I'm a little stumped here. I'll ask you, well, what colors do you like in here? What are you attracted to? It's not about me. It's about you. So what colors do you like in there? And if you said, like, I, I like the black. Oh, the black is really nice. Or the whole, you know, um, what, you know, the blue. I like that teal. Yeah, that's what sandals. I'm thinking is the yeah. blues. Yeah. yeah. So then I could, I would run and pick up a, a mat that might have a little, I have a white mat with a teal core. So when you cut it, just the bevel has teal. Just the bevel. Mm -hmm. You just need a little color. Right. Now that way we could pick up a little of that. That right. might be fun. Um, the red would be a fun one and too. And the brick, the yeah. red brick, yeah. And, and, it, just like the red and it doesn't mean that the entire thing should be that matte color, that solid mm -hmm. color. You don't always want to have those big, huge, solid mats. Sometimes just that that inner mat is a better way to go with just that tiny little bit of color. Yeah, yeah. so here's exactly. here's your blue core. <clears throat> That's kind of right. neat, yep. Yeah, just a little. And here's your red core. Yeah, either one. Just, just a gives little. a very different yeah. look, yeah. So well, that's where we would start. And now, I was afraid that the blue would make it too, I wouldn't want the eye to be drawn just to her sandals because that would be silly, but it, it kind of works. It works. Mm -hmm. It works because it goes all the way around. Well, and I also know how good blue looks on her. Yeah. So that that's yeah. why I went to the blue right away because I think blue when I think her with her blue eyes. Yeah. Even though so, you don't see her eyes. Yeah. But I mean, that's what I would ask you is what colors do you see? Now, if you come in and you go, I really like pink. <laughs> all right. Let me pull up a pink mat and we'll go there because I can't insist that you come to my religion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to work with you and show you. So a lot of people would say, well, there's this little red speck in there. Look, see that little red in his collar? Isn't that lovely? I really like that red. Okay. But well, it's what they want. Yeah. So I'll say, okay, let's go with a red mat. And then the next thing you know, um, a same. I had a customer yesterday brought in a, a, a historical map for the township. It's a big fundraiser. Puts it down and she goes, I really want to match this green, green in the, the whatever. So I pull up green and I put on another green and I pull out another green and I get another green. She can't make up her mind. And finally I turn to her and I say, ma'am, green is hideous. <laughs> it is disgusting. Let me show you what I would suggest. Okay. Because then she's realized that green isn't going to work. Working? It's just, and especially for a fundraiser, you know, whenever you're doing donations, Whenever you're doing your photographs for art shows and stuff, go conservative. Mm -hmm. Same with know. when you're painting your house when you're going to sell it. You gotta, yeah. you, you, you gotta be conservative. Yeah. yeah. Go conservative <laughs> with your when you're framing your photographs and stuff. Go conservative if you're selling them. If you're framing them for customers, one thing. If I'm telling you, you come to me and said, "Look, I gotta get 15 pictures in an art show. 
we're going to go conservative because you want people to thumb through your stuff. You want people to look at it and go, I want the photograph. I don't want, I don't want the mats and framing. I want the photograph. Well, just like everything that we've talked about with photography and all of the vendors that you work with, I love it when you have a relationship with someone that you trust so that if I bring mm -hmm. you my dog picture and I oh, say, what do you think? Do with that. And yeah. you say, ew, <laughs> I know you're being honest with me and I can trust you because mm -hmm. you are, you're not just saying, oh, that's lovely, Kathy. <laughs> right. well, well, we'll show that off next week. Uh, hopefully we've learned a lot. If you have more questions for Bridget or about anything we talked about today, uh, please post them wherever. We'll get Bridget involved and get her to start commenting on those and replying over, whether it's on the forum, whether it's on YouTube, wherever. Like me on Facebook? Uh, that too. Yep. Yeah, I'll make I sure to put Facebook. the links on for her Facebook page. And by the way, you can have her work for you remotely. If you send her a photo or if you send me the digital image, I can print it and then give it to her and then she can send it back to you and ship it back over uh, probably just in the United States. I don't know that you would want to do something overseas because glass probably isn't going to last, but if you never I know. If I ship, I generally ship Plexi. Okay. Okay. Or no glass. Okay. Um, if I do things remote, and I do have, actually, they brought up three remote clients right now. They were doing everything over email. Um, they just live too far away, and their relatives or, or you know, other people have recommended me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be doing a shadow box of a jersey for a gentleman whose best friend just got diagnosed with ALS. So we're mm. going to, we, we got this big jersey. We're going to do it. It's going to be big. Um not a problem. I ship it to Michigan. I just shipped a huge shadow box to Texas. So Tyler, Look, Texas got very huge. good. Yeah, that's, so that's, I that's can great. Do remote, yeah, remote. That's easy. Good. That's great. We live in that. We live in that easy. <laughs> it's easy. Yeah. All right. So I think that's it for today. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. Bye. See ya. <laughs>